Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding for the Chairman of Tendon District Council, Councillor Mark Platt. Good evening, members. I invite the Reverend Peter Edwards for prayers. Thank you, Councillor. Good evening, everyone. We are uh, right in the middle of the holy season of Lent, uh, which is a very good uh, opportunity to be honest about our fears and our failings in the light of God's strength and provision. So I invite you to join me in keeping a few moments of silence as we devote ourselves and the business of this evening to God's guidance. Let us pray. A prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Please be seated, members. Uh, good evening once again, members. Welcome to this evening's meeting. Uh, we'll start with uh, item number... Oh, before we start on that, there is a slight change in the agenda tonight regarding the numbers. Um, and when we get beyond 14, I shall refer to the item and the page numbers and not the agenda item number, just to try and uh, prevent any confusion there. So, item number two, apologies for absence. Thank you, Chairman. I have apologies for absence from Councillor John Holmes, Councillor Nichols, Councillor Turner, Councillor Benison, Councillor Whitmore, Councillor Fairley and Councillor Khan. Thank you. Thank you. Item number three, minutes of the last meeting of the Council. Members, any queries on that at all? Okay, agreed. Thank you very much. Item number four, declarations of interest. Thank you, Chairman. I will declare an interest when the pay policy statement item and leave the, leave the room. Thank you. Any other member wish to declare an item on anything on the agenda this evening? No? Okay. Item number five, announces by the Chairman of the Council. Um, I have two announcements. First of all, thank you to all those who took part and attended um, on Friday evening for the Prior Tendering 2019 Awards. Um, I'm sure... Uh, the recipients of the awards uh, would be very grateful. I have um, a correspondence from the High Sheriff of Essex um, who attended. Um, just read you a short item from that. He says, amongst the award ceremonies I have been to during the year, it is a close run thing between tendering and Essex Girl Guides, but I think tendering has won it by a nose. So um, it's nice uh, to receive that from the High Sheriff. We thank him for it. The other item um, is regarding um, someone who's been here quite a while. Um, I'd like members to, this evening to thank Karen Neath, as this will be her last full council meeting. Karen has worked in local government since the 1st of September 1984. Thank you. 
and started working for Tender and District Council on the 1st of April 2005 as Head of Financial Services and the Council's Section 151 Officer. Um, during her time working at Tendering, Karen has supported members, um, showing great dedication and commitment to this council. I'd like to wish Karen all the best for the future. A round of applause, please. <laughs> Item number six, announcements by the Chief Executive. There are none. Item number seven, statements by the Leader of the Council, Councillor Stock. There are none, thank you. Item number eight, statements by members of the, count, the cabinet. We have none. Item number nine, annual state of the tendering district statement by the leader of the council, Councillor Stock. Thank you, Chairman. Um, if I might just, with your indulgence, Chairman, just add a few words um, of, of thanks, really, and congratulations to Karen, because I suspect she's very uncomfortable about being publicly thanked and praised, which is why I wanted to do it, really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Karen has been an absolute rock at this council. She's been here through good times and through bad times. She's been here forever, really, to, to me. Uh, I can't remember a time before Karen. She, um, members all know her as the officer you go to when you've got an issue or problem or you want to get something sorted out. Before she did that job, she was, as you rightly said, the, the council's 151 officer, head of finance, and a formidable operator in that role, looking after the, the council's money, doing a superb job. Um, and we're going to miss you, Karen. We're going to miss you. It's been an absolute pleasure and a joy to, to work with you, and we're going to miss you. But all the best in the future, and we hope to catch up with you occasionally sometime. So, Chairman, um, without further ado, the State of Tendering Statement. This is one of those curious uh, established custom and practice things that we do on this council. I don't know of other councils that do such a thing. Um, I've never really quite understood really what it's about. Is it a State of the District of Tendering Statement, or is it a State of the Tendering District Council statement, which you'll appreciate are two fundamentally distinct things, or is it a bit of both? Um, and it's been down to each individual leader who happens to be basically sitting in this chair when, they, when this meeting comes around that gets the privilege of kind of deciding. Um, in the past, uh, leaders, myself included, have read out a, a pre-written speech, which is a bit dull and boring, if I'm honest, not least for me reading it, certainly for everyone else listening to it. So this time I thought I would be as brief as I can be, I, I believe I've got unlimited time to speak on this, so I'm going to keep it down to less than two hours. Um, <laughs> Joe's not smiling, that was a joke. Um, I'll, I'll be as brief, brief as I can, I'll be as brief, <laughs> I'll genuinely be as brief as I can. I just thought I would reflect, as this is the last council meeting, I'm sure everyone will, be, will have realised that, it's the last council meeting of the municipal cycle. It represents the last time this council ever meets as a body of 60 members. Next time we meet, there will be fewer of us. You know, going into an election, we might all hope certain people won't be back. We might all you know, fear that we might not be back. Uh, this time, we can definitely say for absolute certainty that there will be 12 members fewer. We don't know who they'll be. There'll obviously, you know, more, almost certainly be new members coming in. And we'll have a new council, completely new administration council, uh, in May for our next meeting. So this is the last one. It's a time to look back and reflect. And although it doesn't seem that long ago uh, that we had the last set of elections, they were quite monumental. They coincided with the general election. Not the most recent general election, but it was a general election nonetheless. And on that day, we, we had a bit of a change, a bit of a momentous change here at Tendring, because we went from a Conservative majority uh, to the Conservatives losing control to UKIP uh, winning 22 seats. First time that ever won any seats on, in, in Tendring, and they went from zero to 22, which is no mean feat, Chairman. Um, Conservatives lost their outright control. Conservatives lost our leader. Mick Page lost his seat. Um, so we had the potential for four years of utter chaos and turmoil with no one party having, having control. Uh, but nevertheless, Chairman, uh, and I became leader of the Conservatives, obviously, I'm repeating history here, and we had one seat more than UKIP, and, and I attempted to form an administration. I, I invited all group leaders to join me if they so wished, and some of them did and some of them didn't, and we put together an administration. And we've done a lot of things in the last four years, Chairman, and this council, whether you're sitting this side or that side, has been the best council that I can ever remember. And I've been on tenure now for 16 years, and I can honestly say this has been the best council because although we've had our political differences, of course we have, we have all really put our shoulders to the wheel and pushed in the right direction when it's come to the big issues. I genuinely, genuinely believe that. And, and if I can just reflect back, one of the first jobs I had to do as leader four years ago, actually, was, was attend the opening 
of the sea defences at Holland on Sea. That had been a massive, massive project, biggest in the country. £36 million of funding went into protecting and preserving five kilometres um, of, of sea. Uh, Nick sadly isn't here tonight. He's recovering from, from a um, surgery, and I do hope he gets well soon. But Nick will be the first to tell you that this district basically made England a little bit bigger by pushing the sea back and, and, and bigging, digging the be bigging the beaches back up to where they used to be, and we've made the country a little bit bigger. And there's three miles of, of, of fantastic coastline now that we just simply didn't have. We protected, safeguarded thousands of houses in doing so. And I'm going to liken that achievement actually to what we've done with broadband and. and that may seem a little bit odd, but with that uh, coastal defence scheme, the £36 million, what we did, what this council did was, we identified £3 million quid and we said that money is for protecting and enhancing the coastline. We managed to use that money to leave a match funding out of Essex County Council, so we had £6 million quid on the table. And then our relationships with the Environment Agency by that stage were well established and we had a really good working relationship with them and they knew of our passion and our determination to actually do something meaningful. They saw the six million quid metaphorically sitting on the table and they said, OK. And, and suddenly, in a state of, let's face it, local government austerity, when everyone was cutting back on schemes like that, because we were prepared to go, we had an oven ready deal, we knew what we wanted to achieve, they backed us to the hill and the scheme happened incredibly quickly, incredibly quickly, uh, with some superb organisation and, and leadership from this council to make it actually happen. And we did it. Now, how does that relate to broadband? Because I just mentioned broadband. Well, uh, I think it was two years ago now, I signed an urgent, oh, a year and a half ago, I signed a, an urgent decision, so not subject to calling, to give £250,000 of this council's money uh, to a broadband scheme because that £250,000 that we put in attracted over £9 million from BT Openreach. Now, most people across Tendering have already got super fast broadband, which is fantastic, but thousands and thousands of people in some surprisingly quite large communities and rural locations, and this is a rural district after all, don't have super fast broadband, but even as we speak, fibre optic cables are being pulled through ducts and put on telegraph poles and connected up um, to houses. And this year, we are seeing something like over 7,000 houses in tendering. Over 7,000 houses are going to be getting super fast broadband because of a decision this council took. Could have been a bit risky, but we were out there. We were positive. We went on the front foot. We said, we want super fast broadband for this district. We don't want 90% of our residents or 95%. We want 100% of our residents to get super fast broadband. Now, realistically, we may never get to 100%, but we're going to jolly well try and try as hard as we can. And we did it. We've got those houses being, being connected literally as we speak. We've got a housing department, a housing service um, that is rated by its tenants as the best council housing in the country. It's something, you know, do you remember that peer review that we had last year? My last year's state of tenure statement was basically reading out from the Local Government Association peer review when we had chief executives and council leaders from other authorities came down and told us what we've been doing right and what we're doing wrong. And they were very complimentary about how this council is led and run and what we're trying to achieve and how members are all engaged and officers know what they're doing. Um, and they said we don't shout about what we're good at strongly enough, and we don't. Housing, we are the best housing authority in the country. Our own tenants tell us that. The housing um, finance initiative said Tenure District Council is among the very best in the country for understanding the importance of housing. And one of the reasons, Chairman, that I didn't write a, a speech tonight is because it's such a movable face. They say a week is a long time in politics, and I've managed to get this far without mentioning the B word, and I'll try, I'll try really hard not to, um, but I might come back to it in a second. Um, but there's been two issues that have hit my desk just today. One is I just happened to check my Twitter feed. I noticed the Gazette um, running a story um, on 10 new houses being built in, in Jaywick, and I, I cut and paste it. Um, work has started on 10 new homes in Jaywick as part of a project aimed at kick-starting regeneration. Tendering Council is building the houses on land off Lotus Way to improve the quality of housing in the area. The houses will be made up of five council homes and five homes for sale with priority for all 10 being given to local residents. Work has already started on an electrical substation needed to supply the homes and further planned development in Jaywick. Paul Honeywood, Councillor with Special Responsibility for Jaywick, said this work has not been easy, with reptiles on the site delaying our start to this work, but we hope to see those homes completed and with people moving in towards the end of this year. And if you want to laugh, there's actually a picture of Paul with a shovel doing some manual labour for the first time in his life. Um, <laughs> um, that is a real achievement, though. We're actually doing something positive and constructive in Jaywick. In Jaywick. 
Um, Tim, I did promise I wouldn't go on, on too long, um, and, I'll, and I'll try and stick to that if I may. There's loads of other things I, I could talk about, the amazing things we're doing, the stuff going on in Harris to celebrate the 400th anniversary of the Mayflower. Um, I just want to reflect just for a second on that B word that I said I've managed to avoid saying so far. I, I genuinely think that one of the problems that MPs are having at the moment is that they're not used to making decisions. We as councillors wouldn't be in that mess that they're in if it was down to us to determine Brexit. Not just because we've all got one view on it, because we, we haven't. Um, but because as councillors, you have to make decisions. As a councillor, I'm not talking about on the Cabinet or the Leader. I'm talking about you sit on the Planning Committee, you sit on the Licensing Committee, you sit on just about any committee. And you have to sit and make a decision. You have to stare down the people who are dead against you being, in, being for something, or those who are dead against you being against something, if that's not a double negative. Um, sit on planning, right? And you can either approve it or refuse it. You'll upset half the room, whatever you do, but you have to make a decision. Yeah, there are conditions you can put on. There's a little bit of riddle room, but you have to make a decision. And it's not easy. It's not easy. It's hard. We didn't become councillors because it was easy. We became councillors because it was hard, but it was the right thing to do. And I think members of Parliament struggle with that. They vote on legislation. They tend to be directed which way to vote by their whips normally on anything controversial or difficult. And here they are faced with this decision on Brexit, and they're struggling to make it. They can tell you what they don't want, but they're all struggling to say what they do want. And they wouldn't make very good councillors, quite frankly, if they're not able to make a positive decision one way or the other. And I do think that's a, a poor reflection on them, but it does remind us how good you have to be to be a local councillor to effectively represent your residents, which so many of us have done. So, Chairman, in summary, in summary um, as we reflect back on the last four years, let me say this quite sincerely. It's been an absolute pleasure for me to lead this council. It's not been easy. We've had to put a team together, didn't have a majority, had to put a team together. We've had to work with people of different political backgrounds. But it's been an absolute pleasure, and it's been a privilege, and it's been an honour, and, and I've really enjoyed it. And I genuinely think we have achieved some terrific steps forward for this district. Um, we've got a wonderful set of officers. We, we're just saying goodbye shortly to Karen. But we've got a fantastic team, led by him. We're all really proud of them. They do a fantastic job for us. They have a, commi um, they have a, a commitment and a passion for, for tendering for this district that is rare to see in other local authorities, and we are really lucky. And in a district like tendering that's got the undeniable social disadvantages and socioeconomic problems that we've got, it's got the most deprived community in the country, a, an OK council isn't good enough. A mediocre council to us won't cut it. You have to have an outstanding council. And, Chairman, I'm convinced that's what we've got. Thank you. <clears throat> Councillor Broderick. Thank you, Mr Chairman. just like to echo Ke uh, Neil's remarks about the sea defences. I remember in 2014, or before 2014... Oh, I should have declared an interest, actually, because my house is on the seafront. I don't. <laughs> um, I used to be woken up at night with the, actually the sea shaking the house. And, and I had nightmares of waking up in the middle of the sea somewhere on a cruise. Or, anyway. Um, but no, thank you. It, it's, it's the most wonderful thing and people, we've got. If you go to any other country, they really can't even compete with that. Uh, you know, it's... it's it's a marvellous, marvellous thing that you did, um, uh, that we did, uh, that our leader did, uh, that um, our chief executive officer and all the staff did, Nick and so on. And I, I thoroughly enjoyed going to HMS Warrington and seeing, um, you know, the way those, they work it all out in those tanks. It's and so clever. And who'd think that we've got that kind of operation in this country? But... Um, I became a councillor because of the sea defences, because I didn't really want to move, and I didn't want the house to move either. And uh, so it's magnificent. And uh, we need to start charging all the cars that park around the front to pay for it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah. thanks very much indeed, everyone. No councillor Ferguson. sure you can all hear me anyway. Um, I couldn't take, um, I, I wanted to take this opportunity just to add a few things after Neil has outlined all the positive things that we've done. Um, I wanted to just from a personal point of view thank the officers under Ian, um, the support that they give us as councillors makes us look good 
Um, Ian has an amazing team of people that, that he works with all through the council and I just wanted to add my personal thanks for all the help and support they've given me for the last four years. I couldn't do my job as councillor without them. You pick up the phone, you get your answer that you need and you look good in front of your residents. Um, I think we would all agree that our officers under Ian really do deserve another round of applause. Thank you. Councillor Henderson. Thank you, Chairman. And I would like to follow on by that by saying you always recognise a good team by the leadership and uh, you can see a mile off um, those working around our Chief Executive, how well they work together and how well they support the Council. And that's because they've got a really good leader leading this Council and working with them, not as their Chief Executive, but as part of the team. I think that's how I see him. And I'd like to thank um, Ian and all the officers, but also recognise and associate myself with the um, comments associated to um, Karen, because I think there is going to be a big hole there left when Karen goes, and there's a big hole to fill by um, someone. Karen has done a really good service to the council, and I think we should appreciate that. I also want to uh, mention, we mentioned all the good officers in all the departments here at the council, but we should also think at this time of the past officers as well that are perhaps not with us here today who have actually given their loyal service um, to this council and made a huge difference who can't be with us here today. Listening to... Um, Neil, um, and all the positive things, and nobody can take that away from um, the achievements during the four years. The Holland on Sea, we should always remember there was a really good officer what led on that, um, June Clare, uh, who is one of those officers who's not with us, who led all the way on that and surely made that actually happen. Um, most of that happened. Um, Neil mentions all those positive things. I can say he mentioned the Mayflower 400, which is coming up. I know working with officers, what a big difference they've made on tourism, leisure, uh, around the whole of the district. But it does worry me, and I hope the next administration, whoever it is, actually makes uh, this issue a priority, because the social exclusion which is within this district needs to be tackled. We can talk about broadband being available for people, but I know there's several people in this district can't afford to actually um, take advantage of that broadband and the internet. That's why we've got the argument at the moment about libraries at the moment, them being the places where people can go to actually um, lodge their applications for benefits and all sorts. So there is an issue there on broadband. There's also an issue where we've seen food banks actually grow. We're seeing winter warmers still. We ha actually had, and um, Neil didn't mention it, um, the UN um, investigator come here and actually show how far and how wide deprivation has grown around this country actually on our doorstep. And that is something that needs to be um, dealt with. We're seeing a 12% increase since 2010 on deprivation levels and poverty levels here in the district. So when we celebrate all these good things around this district and celebrate all these things that people can come and enjoy and see, we can't forget those areas, those hidden areas around this area where there could be elderly people in isolation and loneliness. And like I said, children in poverty. We're seeing the first project in Harwich this year dealing with hunger holidays, where children, we're making sure children get a proper meal while they're not at school and not, in, not getting their free school meals. Now, that's not something to be proud of, and that's something we do need to make, um, uh, uh, make a big priority. We're seeing some of our areas in the district where we're seeing life expectancy, you know, um, reduced uh, because of the situation and the poverty that people are living in. So, I'm not, I don't, I mean, it's putting a black picture on things. There are some really good things here, 
but we do need to make sure we actually tackle those social exclusion um, areas of this, um, this district council, which haven't been tackled, which are getting worse, which do need a priority during the next administration. But again, I just want to add from my group here, our appreciation to all the officers who have done a, such a fantastic job and worked together with us. Housing, um, it, um, Neil mentions housing. There's a real big shortage of social housing. I know by dealing with those housing officers, they must be frustrated every time they pick the phone up where someone is being evicted and they are homeless and they've got nowhere for them to go or they've got them, they're putting them in some substandard rented accommodation. We need to do a lot more. Yeah, 10 houses, but there's a vast amount more houses Time we need to build Henderson. for social housing and affordable housing. So, like I said, Chair, I hope uh, the next administ administration picks up these priorities straight away. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Item number 10. Sorry, my apologies, I missed somebody. Councillor Stock, apologies. Sorry, Chairman, I just wanted to thank everyone for, the, for those um, warm and generous comments. And I actually forgot in, in my enthusiasm, I, I mentioned that there were, um, this was very much a movable feast and writing a speech um, was difficult because things happened so quickly. The other thing that happens very, very quickly, and I've literally just had this through today, uh, members will recall uh, we were awarded gold status by investors in people. We are the only council I know of that's got, and there might be others, but I genuinely don't know of any other council in the country that's got gold status by investors in people. Um, now we've been re-accredited, uh, reassessed, uh, reappraised for that. Now they've made it much harder to get the gold status, so we weren't, you know, optimistic. But nevertheless, we have been reappraised as gold. I'm delighted to be able to tell everyone, um, which is an outstanding achievement. And again, it, you know, it's a terrific tribute to our chief executive and all his staff, everyone who works for this council, and to the members. <laughs> so, thank you, Ian, and. You know, to the council for everything we do to make this a positive place. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 10, petitions to council. There are none on this occasion. Item number 11, questions pursuant to council procedure rule 10.1. There are none on this occasion. Item number 12, questions pursuant to council procedure rule 11.2. There are none on this occasion. Item number 13, report to the Leader of the Council, urgent cabinet or portfolio holding decisions. There's no such report on this occasion. Item number 14, minutes of committees, pages 11 to 46. Councillor Stock. Yeah, Chairman, I'd like to move the minutes um, as printed um, with the notes that um, there are uh, recommendations from the Human Resources Committee and the Overview and Scrutiny Committee that are, that are date with, dealt with later on the agenda in terms of the two motion and the pay policy statement. Thank you. All those in favour? Thank you very much. Okay, so we now move to motions to council. There are no new motions on notice. Motions to council proposed to town council for Clacton on Sea, page 47. Councillor Land. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'd just like to move the motion as uh, listed on page 23 of your agenda pack. Thank you. Thank you. Chairman, if I may clarify, the item which w the the uh, motion which went to council previously um, and was referred to committee is item is uh, is, is itemised at the bottom of page 47. On page 48 in bold is the recommendation from the Community Leadership Overview and Scrutiny Committee back to Council, uh, which was the motion, motion amended to read, the, this Council seeks to ascertain the views of the people of Jaywick, Clacton and Holland-on-Sea as to the possible creation of a Town Council or Councils for the currently unparished area of the District and that this be done by way of a question included with the Council text leaflet. So that is an amendment which has come back from the Community Leadership Overview and Scrutiny Group Committee. Councillor Land is quite correct. It is also contained within the minutes. But if you do refer to page 48, it is easier then to refer to page 47. So page 48 is your, your first debate. If that is carried, that becomes a substantive motion. If 
that falls, you revert back to the original motion which was put, which starts on page four, at the bottom of page 47 and goes over to page 48. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Stock. Oh, in the absence of anyone else volunteering to speak, I'll um, just... Um, I got an email today from Councillor Newton, I think it was, um, that I think was sent to all members, stating that she discovered the fact that some members are members of parish and town councils, and therefore they should support this motion, or at least the uh, previous uh, one. Um, and, I, and I don't accept that notion. Uh, I said when we discussed and debated this item only a few months ago, or maybe a year or two ago, it wasn't that long ago, um, that if there was any evidence whatsoever that the people of Clacton, any part of Clacton, frankly, wanted a town council or a parish council, then not only would I happily support them in achieving that aim, I couldn't stop them because the Localism Act 2011 actually has provision in place that local communities, and that isn't just towns and parishes now, that, that can be a, a cul-de-sac, a little street, they can set up community councils. Um, none of them have been set up across tendering, but that isn't to say that won't happen in the future. Um, but until and unless there is some sort of evidence that people in Clacton actually want a town or parish council, uh, I'm not going to be the one that tries to impose it upon them because there is a cost to democracy. It's an expensive business. We've just taken a decision, this council, to reduce the number of councils from 60 down to 48, and that does cut the cost of running tender council a little bit. It's still a very expensive business. Setting up another layer of bureaucracy, another layer of government for Clacton will have a cost associated with it. That's fine if people want it, but to impose it upon people when no one has ever said they want it, I, I think is slightly perverse. So I don't support... Um, this idea until and unless people come forward and say they want it. And given the fact we had a big discussion last time, that would have been the opportunity I would have thought for people to sort of have read the newspaper articles at least, uh, the, the reports of the fact we'd refused to set up a, or, or, or come up with a community governance review that imposed a town or parish council on Clacton, and they could have come back then and, and written letters to the paper, petitioned us, come to council meetings. No one has done so. I've not had a single email on it. In 16 years as a councillor, as I said last time, the only person that's ever consistently said they want a town council for Clacton is Robert Butte, bless him, who doesn't obviously live in Clacton, but he, he's passionately and consistently wanted one, and I admire him for that, but he's the only person. Thank you, Councillor Buke. Thank you, Chairman. I, I noted you asked Councillor Land to move the motion. It was my understanding that Councillor Newton was going to move a motion, and perhaps she'd like to do so in, in a moment. Uh, but before she does so, and I will second it when she does, I find some of the comments from Council Stock despicable, to be honest, in terms of local democracy. Um, I started the correspondence with Councillor, not Councillor, with Karen Neath, I beg your pardon, in 2011, and we had an exchange of correspondence between ourselves at that time. Um, we were talking about the process of setting up a town council and the cost at that time of setting it up were estimated to be about £50,000. A lot of people, including Council Stock, will think that's too much money to spend on the people of Clapton. 140, 50,000 of them, uh, and no doubt uh, some people in Clacton and members of this council will think the same. Uh, indeed, when we had a, a vote um, in 2017, um, this council me had members on both sides of the chamber saying they didn't want it. It's my understanding that uh, uh, members on both sides might now want to recommend uh, that the people of Clacton be consulted. And let's be clear about that, because at the last time it was voted on, the, this council voted not to, con not to consult the people of Clacton. And I made an issue of that at the time. But as I say, that goes back to 2011. And, and uh, we had a motion uh, in Ju July 2017, or thereabouts, um, and again in November 2018, which has been carried forward into where we are now. Um, it was in 2017, I think, when... Uh, Councillor Tolbert, Griffiths, Miles, Bray, Honeywood and indeed Charles Watling uh, expressed uh, objection to having a town council for Clacton, even though one of those is, is our, our MP. Uh, they were saying things like, we have managed so far since 1974, 45 years ago. Well, I put it to you that the Clacton of today is not the Clacton it was in 1974, and there are many good reasons why that is. And the problems that we have now are costing us in terms of community value, uh, policing, uh, and health uh, issues. The motion that we have before us on page 48, as the 
Chief Executive pointed out, is to, to um, consult the people of Clatton to see if, if they would um, want to um, bring about a governance review. This, there is no intention to impose or force a council on Clacton. The motion is to consult the people of Clacton uh, to see whether they would uh, like that to be explored, in which case this council can uh, present the people of Clacton with some truths about what it might cost and what it can do, and not the scaremongering that we hear from uh, Councillor Stock and others opposite about what it costs and without, without any measurement of the value of the cost, the value brought to the community. We need to remind ourselves that town councils, uh, and I'm a member of one at Frinton and Walton, and I know there are 22, 23 members of this council who sit on local uh, town and parish councils, 23, including Councillor Stock, I think, is still chairman of his own, but would gl gladly give it up if he had a chance to do so. So, town and parish councils, what do they do? Well, I'll list a few here. Uh, sports facilities, children's play areas, allotments, bus shelters, community centres, parks and open spaces, providing financial grants to local community groups and consultation on neighbourhood planning, litter, graffiti, cycle paths, public toilets. That's a big issue, isn't it, where the district councils close toilets and town councils are opening them. In Brightling Sea, the district council closed the pool or, the, or some such, whereas the town council has taken on operation of the pool. Uh, without the town council, I doubt that would have happened. Community safety schemes, facilities for young people, traffic calming and parking regulations, housing and neighbourhood planning, empty shops. My God, we've got a big one in Clacton. Ideas to help make the town more attractive and tourism activities. These are the sort of things that town and parish councils can do. And the costs of running those councils are not um, scaremongering figures. We, we know from our little car we've got here today, the average tendering council cost to taxpayers £167 a year um, in our own parish and town councils, the cost is usually below a pound per head per week. Uh, that, uh, that's uh, from the um, assessments I've made, Fenton, Walton, Harwich uh, and elsewhere, I think um, Bromley is about 16 pence a week, something like that. So, so we're not asking, uh, we're not imposing a town council on Clacton. We're asking people if they would like to consider the facts that are put before them and, and uh, to proceed to a governance review thereafter. As Councillor Stock has alluded to several times, we're here to, we're here to show leadership. Uh, other, other places in this country, like Tower Hamlets, where they've been, uh, brought a... Councillor Buick, you've had your five minutes. Thank you. Uh, have imposed or brought about councils in those towns. Uh, in, in our own Tenry district, We've got the Clacton Town Partnerships. Okay, you've had your five minutes. I'm calling time now. And that, that, okay, that's uh, the, the future of Clacton. Is that important to you, is it, Chairman? You've had your five minutes, so everyone else is entitled. So Clacton's got five minutes, has it? It's entitled. Well, thank you very much for that, Chairman. You're very welcome. Five Before minutes, we go any further... Five minutes is what Clacton deserves under your chairmanship. Thank you very much. Before we go any further, we're going to have some clarification on actually what it is that we're talking to. I just wanted to um, make reference to the um, rules regarding who moves a motion when it's referred back from a committee, and that is the chairman of the relevant committee, which is why Councillor Land moved the motion, which is a recommendation which is printed in your agenda. That's in accordance with the rules. Um, Councillor Newton, obviously, will you be entitled to speak, as will any other member be entitled to speak on this motion as well. Thank you very much for that. So far I've got eight members that wish to speak at five minutes each. Councillor Newton. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. I actually, as the... Um, person who pushed the original motion would like to speak on it and I would like to say that when I actually attended that committee I went outside and until I actually read it in the council's agenda here I did not know what the result of that meeting was. However, I accept what is here and I would like to say that having done my research I find it a little double standards to say that the people of Clacton and by that I mean Holland-on-Sea 
Clapton and Joe Rick do not have the right to have anybody can, sorry, well, I'm not forcing it upon them. What I'm asking this council to accept, please, is the right for us to ask those residents if they would like to have the opportunity to explain to those residents what benefits they might achieve from it. That was my intention of bringing the motion. I've actually sat for four years and watched varying different town and parish councils achieve um, benefits that we, as the residents of Clacton, cannot get because we don't have anybody who can ask for it. And that was the reason I brought this motion. So I hopefully would like to again respectfully ask that when you think about what I've asked, you understand that I'm just asking you, please, for the right to ask the people 4,300 and whatever we are, that we have 43,000, I beg your pardon, that we actually have the same rights as every other parish and town resident of Tendring. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Councillor Heaney, you may remain seated. Thanks, Mary. Oh, it's a bit loud. Um, I am not against this, but um, I know that Councillor Newton emailed us all saying that we should support this motion because I personally am on a parish council. Now, my parish council is non-political, we have no expenses, and we are not paid. So, and we have very, very, if, I don't know if Councillor Buke meant that Great Bromley was 60 pence a week or Little Bromley, but it's not much more, I suspect, because we take no expenses. I don't expect that this would be the case at Clapton Parish Council, where I expect that people would think they probably want expenses and want, possibly wanted to be paid. Now, um, if we're going to consult the residents on this, this will in obviously increase the rates, or whatever it's called now, it's community charge. And when they're being consulted, the, the, this must be pointed out to them. You know, they may be told about all the wonderful things they might get from council, but they must, it must be, they must be told that their rates will increase, and they'll probably increase quite a bit in Clacton if the councillors intend to be paid or will vote themselves to be paid. There's no way we can stop um, Clacton having a council if they want one. And, and I am sure that everybody understands that. But anyway, thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Honeywood. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I noticed my name was mentioned before about the previous discussions we had on this. And to begin with, I'd like to sort of set the record straight. I'm not for or against a town and parish council in Clacton. What I think is right is it should be for the residents to decide if they want it or not, and not a council issue. Individual councillors, if they want to get involved in helping residents to make that happen, as yeah. Councillor Stock yeah, yeah, yeah. described, that's entirely up to them. Now, I'd like to move on to a previous debate we had discussing the number of councillors in this very council. And I remember we had a series in September 2016 of votes about how many councillors should be here. And I remember quite a few people voted to chop it down by one. We don't want 60. Oh, we lost the vote. We'll go 59. We'll go 58. That argument was put forward because those people put in that argument said that the decision had been made before they were elected, a decision they had no control over. And I, don't, I think the general gist was it wasn't right. So what we're saying here today is we want to make a decision to put this letter out to ask residents in the next term when some of us are definitely not going to be here and will have no say. Newly elected people will be left with that just the same as those were elected previously. Now is the wrong time to do it. If you're going to do it, you do it in the next term ready for the next council tax if you're going to do it. I think, no, I think the time to do it is for residents to do it themselves with the support of their councillor if they so wish. So I shan't be supporting the motion. 
Now, one thing has been suggested to me by one or two people, and uh, I'm not right to comment or not, but it was suggested that the idea may be a lifeboat for those who are not too successful in the coming elections. Is that true or not? <laughs> I don't know. But I shan't be supporting the motion, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Baker. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I cannot support the amended motion nor the original motion. Um, it's almost exactly the same as we debated on the 21st of November 2017. When it was put, we debated it and it was lost. Since that date, what has changed? In my view, absolutely nothing. Um, as far as I'm aware, I haven't had any emails from residents of Clacton imploring me to put forward the fact that they would like a town or parish council, um, asking for a governance review and any community groups coming forward either. This council has been said voted to reduce the number of councillors from 60 to 48. That's a saving over the next four years, and I won't be here, of £250,000 about. That's a quarter of a million pounds. Yet, we're being asked through this motion, whichever one you read, um, in my view, to the, the public, to be asked their views on having another tier of government. A town or parish council with the power to set an uncapped precept. And I'll repeat that, Chairman, an uncapped precept. We are, as a district council and the county council, are capped. Parish councils are not, which can be seen by the increases that parish councils, including my own, have made. Some have made single figures, others have made double figures. What will this town or parish council do in Clacton, Jaywick or Holland, or all of them? And Councillor Buke has mentioned a few. Will it own land? Well, what's it going to do? Is it going to raise taxes to purchase land from tendering? Tendering district council is not going to give land for people in those parish councils to look after those assets and raise taxes to do the same as this district council is doing at the moment. It will be a further financial commitment on the residents and for what? Looking at the figures on page 49, 43,497 electors, and forgive me, I've taken Harwich Town, Town Council as a, an example because it's the only one that came to my head. They have 16 councillors for 16,000 or a bit more residents. That's one per thousand residents. Does that mean that the Clacton Town Council, if it comes to fruition, is going to have 43 town councillors? That's nearly as big as the district council will be from 2019. I also received a, a, an email from Councillor Newton asking me to support the motion, and I'm sorry I can't. I am a parish councillor, I'm a Lawford parish councillor, and we have a precept. But for a long time, Lawford has owned land, it's got three play areas, it's got a football field which we lease out, and we're responsible for them financially. We also own 108 streetlights, which we keep on. Unfortunately, they are coming to the end of their life. They're 30 or 40 years old, and to replace them is £200,000, which the people of my parish and those I represent will have to foot the bill for. Now, I'm sure that the current residents of Clacton, Jaybrook and Clacton are glad that they do not have to share such a financial burden. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Miles. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> I wanted to respond, really, to the comments that Councillor Buke made, reference the comments we made at a meeting last year, the year before. I want to reiterate what I said at that meeting, I said it very clearly, and I'm happy to stand up and repeat it this evening. My, I've been a town councillor in Frinton and Walton for the past eight years. I consider myself to be a, quite a dedicated, committed, and hard-working councillor. However, however, I have not been able to represent the people who voted for me as a town councillor in Walton, simply because it is politically driven. Councillor Heaney has referred to her parish council that says it's non-political. Many, many, if not all the parish councils in Wales, I wouldn't like to say all, but many of them, they are non-political, even town councils, because the main thrust of the, that town council is the town that it's serving or the parishes that it's serving. 
And whilst we're playing politics with the public, with our residents who pay the council tax and the additional precept, and play silly games, I have to say, with great disappointment, but with some arrogance, if you like, because I've actually served, Karen, I'm sorry to say this, and I'm sorry to see you go, but I served 40 years working in seven different county councils. So I do feel I have the right to make some of these statements and judgments. It is a complete and utter waste of Frinton and Walton taxpayers' money the way it's been run at the moment, if I'm frank with you. And I stand by it, and I'll be shocked by it if that's how people feel. That doesn't mean to say that I don't support Councillor Newton's motion, because all she's asking for is that the views of the residents in Clacton and surrounding areas are sought. And I would propose that if this council doesn't support it, then those councillors who are elected in May make it their duty that they will somehow or other survey the, the, their own residents to get the views of people. But on the experience I've had in Frinton and Walton Town Council, and Walton is very dear and precious to me, and it's a needy little town, I have been hugely disappointed with the way it's been run. Eight years I have been refused a position to sit on a working party. And every single year at the annual meeting, I have stood up and I have made the same statement that if Widdicombe rules are good enough for higher authorities, i.e. county councils and district councils, shouldn't we as a town council adopt those um, working things, so this pro rata that we have representation? I'm saddened to have had to say these things this evening, but they have to be said. So, again, if we are going to go forward in any way, please make it non-political. 22% Frinton and Walton Town Council put their precept up by this year. 22%. It's all well and good for some of us to stand here and translate that into pounds and pence. But I can assure you, there isn't a single pensioner in the Walton Ward or even an employee who's had 22% increase in their salaries or in their income over the last five, six, seven years collectively. You know, most of them have been at a standstill and, and their incomes have reduced. But the arrogance of the town council to dismiss it as pittance is beggar's belief. And so, I'm sorry. I'm just saying that my own personal experience is that Clacton needs to be very wary of what it does for its residents and needs to go in with very clear boundaries of how it's run. I have been invited to Harwich Town Council. I've been invited to Brightlingsea Town Council. I've always wanted to take up those offers but never got round to doing it because they operate a much fairer and more democratic system. So, sorry, Chairman, but I felt it had to be said. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Griffiths. Thank you, Mr Chairman. And thank you for Councillor Buke for remembering my stance on this. I have to say that over the years nothing has changed. I'm still not convinced that Clacton needs a parish council or a town council, or in fact Clacton needs three councils, because let's be quite honest, with Holland and Jaywick all lumped together in one big Clacton council, it would be, they'd be totally lost, so you'd probably need a parish council for Jaywick, a town council for Clacton, <coughs> and a town council for Holland to make it all fair. That's three additional um, town or parish councils representing people on top of an MP, a county councillor, a district councillor, and at the moment a Euro MP. One can only ask how much representation certain people want. But, you know, after doing numerous general elections, quite a few district elections, a number of referendums, I still haven't found anybody who, when I've knocked on the door, said, do you know what, Chris, what we really want is more politicians. What we really want is, more, is another tier of local government. What we really want is more bureaucracy and more people that we're having to pay for. You know, I, I'm sorry that there might be some people in the world of, of the countryside that feel that they need more representation that they're all paying for because with all that lot they don't have enough representation. 
But most people in Clacton are looking at this and saying, look, you've just reduced it down, your council down from 60 to 48. Are you now suggesting that on top of this we need another council, another tier of government, or potentially another three councils? I'm not convinced, to be quite honest, I think if we looked at that and after reducing the number of district councillors to then go ahead and replace them with parish or town councils, I think a lot of residents would be seriously wondering what we're actually doing. My view has always been very, very simple, that if there is a, a, a need and the general public decide that they really want that, I'm open to it. If residents in St James, you know, get in touch with me en masse and say, Chris, look, you know, would you help us set up a parish or town council to support our needs? I'm open to it. I'm open to finding out how you do it. If they can demonstrate there's enough of them, I'm even ready to support it. But what I'm really not ready to do as their elected representative and say what you actually need is more politicians. I'm sorry, when you look at what we're actually doing uh, at the moment, and when you, for, for example, you look at places like Westminster, I think people think we've probably got enough politicians and those, that we aren't, and those that we have got maybe aren't looking after our interests as well as they could be. So my view is, let's keep with what we've got. If in the, if in the, if in the fullness of time there's a groundswell of, of people in Clacton or Holland or Jaywick who say, look, this is what I think we really need to improve our area, then I would be you know, quite happy to support them. So far, I haven't <coughs> seen it. The door is always open, if it's, my door is always open to my residents if that's what they feel we need, but really it's not down to me to tell them that that's what they need, and, and I really support Councillor Honeywood. I'm not for or against the concept, but I would want the move to come from residents, because let's be honest, once we set up these tiers of local government, they're jolly hard to get rid of, and they can be very expensive for your council tax in the long run. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Bray. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I think most of the points have been well covered by others, so I will be brief and simply summarise. Um, what we're being asked to do tonight is make a decision that will leave something for the next council. That means new people will have to invoke a decision that we make. In my opinion, that is never, ever a good idea. That's number one. And it does feel a little bit deja vu here. I'm sure we've done all this before. We've all, made the, we've all heard the points. We've all made our points before. And not that long ago, a little over a year, I believe, at that point, this council voted the idea down. I cannot actually see that anything's changed. Back then, I also asked, I asked around um, councillors whether anybody had actually taken the trouble to ask substantial members of the people in Clacton, Holland and Jaywick for their opinion. And I didn't find very many had. I did, and I remember saying to you at the time, and I'm trying to remember the number, but I think I actually spoke in total to around about 160 people, and a lot of people in the area, and I didn't hear one who said to me that they wanted another tier of government, as my colleague Councillor Griffiths put it, um, and quite well. I didn't hear anybody say they wanted more politicians either. We are here to represent. We're not here to dictate. Anybody who wants a town or parish council can use the mechanisms to get one. They don't need us. They don't need our permission. We can't stop them. It is not our place to tell them that they should have it. And there are other concerns as well, and these were brought up before. We are talking about primarily a town council that would look after Jaywick, Clacton and Holland. That is a huge area. I am not on any parish councils, but I have two in my ward. Um, they're both relatively small. And as a result, they're able to do the sort of things parish and town councils do particularly well, which is community-focused. Imagine a situation where you had a Clacton, Frinton, sorry, Clacton, Walton, get this right in a minute, a Clacton, Jaywick and Holland town council. Obviously, the size of Clacton dwarfs the other two. Therefore, the representatives from Holland and the representatives from Jaywick would always be outvoted by the representatives of Clacton on any issue. It would, in my opinion, not be a good idea. And then, of course, there's the question of cost. We have reduced the size of our council from 60 to 48 in order to save money. If we install another tier of government, 
there will be cost. There is always cost. It does concern me, as has always been, already been mentioned, that that council would be almost as big as this one, if not as big. And, of course, it would have the right to vote itself an allowance if it chose to do so. Some town councils do, mine don't. I also suspect, as been mentioned, that it would probably be political because it's big. Big things tend to become political. It's the way they are. My parish councils have no political members of any party, and that's why they work so well. There are too many reasons, I believe, not to do this, and that's why I won't be supporting the motion. I honestly think that if the people of Clacton want a parish council or town council, they have the ability to ask for one. And I have no objection to that at all. But I believe it's for the councillors in Clacton, the council, I am not one, but for the councillors in Clacton to go and talk to their people, get the people together and start the mechanism to create their town council, their parish council. I do not see that it is the job of this council to dictate. It is the job of this council to represent. Ask the people if they want it, the Clacton councillors can make it happen. They don't need this council to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Broderick, did you indicate to speak? Is that your up? Sorry, if I can get out. Um, this is normally the part where I stand up and say I'm totally against this, not having any of this. I don't want all this bureaucracy and what have you. Could I ask everybody over there to put their hand up if they belong, live in, or are in a parish or town council? Would you do it for me? Why? Why, Why not? Just as humour me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Sorry, there you go. Um, and I have to apologise for my confusion with the new system, the new um, way we do motions now. And to the audience, it may, it must seem a bit uh, not not very efficient for us, not knowing how to do it. But anyway, um, I've changed my mind. And somebody very famous once said, "If you can't change your mind, you can't change anything." Clacton. In my, there's 43,000 and a half thousand people. Well, I was staggered when I saw that. What's that? 30% of the people of tendering. Just think of the money they could bring in for you, you know, or for this council. It would all go into the pot. It's the engine driver. Pardon? Who's speaking? Is it you? You've, you've had a good. Can time. you not interrupt, please? Let Councillor Broderick have her five all minutes. All I'm saying is, all, all, all. Council Newton's asking is to ask. Now that's 43,500, that's, that's a pound a person. They haven't thought to ask for it because, you know, why would you want to buy a pair of boots if you, if you need shoes? But anyway, um, it, it's just, it's, that's 30% of the people of tendering. The rest of you are in town and parish councils. It's not, it's not a huge question. It's just to ask the people. All it is, it can go out in, in a normal survey. It needn't cost too much extra, just paper. It would cost extra for, uh, for the uh, uh, results to be counted and so on. But let's get the question out of the way. You know, it's, it needs to ask. It's going to rumble on and rumble on and rumble on. It needs asking. And just think, Clapton's in trouble. I never thought I'd see it like this, but it is. We all know it. And we need its own little body to deal with those things, come up with those ideas. They needn't have... I don't know where the idea of 40-odd thousand... 40 councillors comes from. Where does that, I mean, I don't know how you decide how many councillors, whether there's some law or whether the people that... I don't know a lot about it, but all I know is, who am I to say we can't ask them. You know, that's all we're doing. That's all we're doing. And knowing her as I do, Councillor Newton, she'll find no trouble at all getting 3,000 signatures. She'll do it overnight virtually, one way or another. So why can't we take the lead? Thank you. Councillor Porter. Um, I'm a little surprised to hear a lot of the people on the other side talking about the town council and that this motion would be imposing it on the people of Clacton, when this motion isn't anything of the sort. It's just simply asking the people of Clacton. So we've had to sit here and listen to 
quite a, a lot of waffle that's got nothing to do with the motion at all. So perhaps you should try reading it and then voting for the thing that you all seem to be saying, which is that the people of Clacton should be asked, which is what the motion is, if you read it. So I assume you will be voting for it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Talbot. Thank you, Chairman. I thought it might be sensible to sound a word of warning about what we're doing and just be careful. Uh, in the early 2000s, we had a petition from Jaywick asking to be made a parish council. The cabinet at the time, John Hawkins, chief executive, and Terry Allen, uh, the leader of the council, the cabinet decided that the petition was sufficiently strong that we should put it to council and see what to do. Council decided we should follow it through. As a council, we applied to John Prescott, who was the minister at the office of the deputy prime minister, to create Jaywick in this area as a parish council. John Prescott's department replied after consideration in the affirmative. Yes, Jaywick would be made a parish and that permission was given. Before we could go ahead, another petition from Jaywick was founded, which was, I can't remember, but whatever it was, it was very nearly the same size. And that petition was hotly opposed to the creation of a parish council. So we came back ourselves and went through the same routine again, but decided that if we're here supposedly to try and carry out the wishes of our electorate, then there clearly wasn't a firm view from Jaywick. There was an exceedingly mixed view. And if you like, eating a little bit of humble pie, this council went back to the office of the Deputy Prime Minister and asked John Prescott if he would be good enough to withdraw the permission that he'd given us to create a parish in Jaywick. Now that's all I'm saying, you get different views at different times from the same group of people. There isn't one positive view. And my only word of warning is, make sure that if you do get a decision and move forward on behalf of the area, it is a very positive one. I must say myself, I'm absolutely a fan of town and parish councils. I think they are the best organisations going almost. You heard Robert list a large number of functions. In fact, the virtually newly created powers of competence that a parish or a town can ask for and take training for gives it almost unlimited powers, still of course with the control of its principal authority. So I'm not opposed to that. But you can't fault what Paul says. It actually, whether you agree with the motion or not, it's the wrong time. We can't do it now. Not only does it say actually, but we could delete it. It should be in the council tax notice. That's in our power to take that away if we wanted to carry, carry the motion. But the fact is, it really is something for the new council to consider. Because it doesn't just run for five minutes. If you're going to do this, it'll take two, two and a half years to accomplish a positive outcome. So don't let's start it off and lumber somebody with it. Let the new council make the decision. The matter could always be brought up again. I compliment Mary for bringing it before us because that's the proper way it should come forward, I think, rather than by way of petitions that we've had in the past. So all I'm saying is, be very careful. Paul's suggestion, supported elsewhere, is eminently correct. What's the point of us carrying this motion now? It's our very last meeting. There's going to be a new council, and they'll be forced to pick it up because it's tendering district council's policy and we've carried it. Don't let's lumber, with that, lumber them with that. With the greatest respect, Mary, I do support either the motion uh, or the recommendations from the committee. I must say I prefer the committee because the committee specifically says the formation of a council or councils. In other words, it could be three councils, whereas your original motion on the previous page is talking about one council covering three districts. If it's three councils, it's roughly 15,000 electors being represented by each. 
I can see the clock ticking down, but I would sincerely recommend to members, we're not really for or against the issue of parish councils at this meeting. We're saying, is this a matter that really the new council elected after May the 2nd should be the ones to consider and not us? Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Stevenson. Thank you, Chairman. I must admit, I was just going to let this one go with Mary's motion. I thought it would be a straightforward, we all go with option two and let the residents decide. A lot of my colleagues have sat there and said, it's up to the residents, and apparently it's not. I'm going to point people back to our corporate strategy. Our corporate strategy in the middle of it has a white square which says community leadership. We are the leaders of this community, and as the leaders of this community, it's up to us to start this conversation. And therefore, we will allow other people to have their say and have their ideas about it. I've heard conversations about the cost. It's not part of this conversation. It's about people having the right to decide for themselves. I've heard so talks about the size. We're going to have one, three. Why not have four? Still not part of the conversation. We had, back in a year and a half ago, we had our own governance and we had a, a consultation. At that point, we had the opportunity to bring in this, and at that point, this administration decided that 26 responses, mostly by parish and dis uh, town councils, were the reason not to have this conversation. So they then turned around and said, we won't do it then. Now, it's too late to have that conversation. We're kind of moving the goalposts to suit the argument. The biggest problem I find with this is that it's not about money, size, or anything to do with having a town council. It's about allowing the residents to decide whether they want a town council and to start the conversation for them. Now, I'm going to hear some arguments that say, well, that's down to the district councillors. Well, I would agree and disagree. Yes, I'm a district councillor, and in my ward, if I started that conversation, maybe I'd get some responses and everything else, but to get a groundswell in a town as big as Clacton requires cooperation from many councillors, and from over the other side of this desk, several councillors have made it clear that they're not prepared, they've put their own personal feelings into this. Not their residents, because they haven't even discussed it with them. That's my point. They're going to sit there and say, we don't agree with this, so we're not going to do it. And that sounds very similar to something that's going on today. So I'm just going to sit there and say, there are other things to be considered. Devolution's one of them. We will be looking to pass things down. Clacton hasn't got a voice, and it never will have unless we give the people the chance to get, have one. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Gugliani. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just would like to put one thing straight. Uh, Councillor Broderick mentioned something about the uh, new way we deal with motion. We're not dealing with any new ways whatsoever. The way that we're dealing with this particular motion is fully laid out in the current constitution that has not had any changes. The procedure is the procedure the Council has used for years and years and years. The new way to deal with motion will come in as from next May, not the not, not in, uh, in this, this present time. Right. I would like to uh, congratulate Councillor Buke three times, Mr Chairman, three times. Once for his tenacity that he's not let the bone go for the last eight years. One for having successfully managed to convince no one to come forward to this council, to put a petition forward, to come and address us, to say, look, we re desperately need a parish council in Clacton. And the third, for being part of a town council which has increased the precept by over 22%. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about double taxation. It's been mentioned by someone before here. A parish council gives you another layer of taxation. That's why, as Council Baker said, law for parish council manages 108 streetlights and the cost that goes with it. I am probably, I think, with Councillor Talbot, one of the oldest, probably longest, Parish Council's uh, um, councillor. Uh, I've been there for a long time. We are having massive problems. You look at elections gone by. 
how few of Parish Council have actually holds an election and is contested. We are having trouble finding people to stand. In Lawford, Manningham, Mistley, we got 7,000 people and 33 councillors. That's one for every 200 people in the area. I mean, if you apply that rule to Clacton, how many parish councillors would you have? 10,000? We are having problems filling the seats that we already have. And, you know, do you want to uh, have a double taxation? No, you don't. And quite frankly, you know, I agree with everyone else to leave this until the next council meeting. But, uh, this is going to be something that should have brought to us from residents. And no one, no one has come forward to say that. It's, the issue has been amply um, covered by the press, by the council themselves, but no one has convinced one single resident to come forward to ask us to consider a town and parish council for Clacton. So I shall be voting against the motion, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Right, so let's put this to the vote, please. Okay, so we need so many people to stand up for a name vote. And I can see we have that, so we'll have a name vote. I'll hand over to the Chief Executive. Council, can I just clarify, we're now going to vote, and I will read out the, the, the motion in a minute, which is an amendment to the original. If this, if this, is, if this passes, it becomes a substantive motion, and it, um, it becomes your motion. If it falls, then it is revert to the item which is, goes from page 47 onto page 48, um, and again, then everybody has the right to, to speak again. So let me just, so I'll read out the motion as it is. This counts... Yeah, on page 48. Thank you, Lisa. This council seeks to ascertain the views of the people of Jaywick, Clacton and Holland as to the possible creation of a town council or councils for the currently unparished area of the district and that this be done by way of a question included within the council tax leaflet. I am now going to read out the name of a councillor and please say if you're for, against... The motion refers to uh, sending a, a question with the next council tax leader. Well, the council tax leader has gone out for this year, so uh, if, the, if the next council is, de is devious enough, they could wait until May 2020. On the other hand, they could use a, 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 more, a more immediate uh, communication if they don't want to wait for 12 months. Thank you, Chairman. I'm reading the motion as it is, appears before you. I have no powers to change that motion. That is what is before you. So I'm now going to read the motion. I've now read the motion out as it is before you. Um, and I will read out whether for Councillor you're for, against or abstain. Councillor Alexander. Yes. Councillor Amos. Yes. Baker. Yes. Bray. Yes. Broderick. Yes. B.E. Brown. Yes. J. Brown. Yes. M. Brown. Yes. Buke. Yes. Bush. Yes. Calendar. Yes. Calver. Cawthron, Chapman, Chitter, Coley, Cousins, Davis, Everett, Ferguson, Fowler, Gray, C. Griffiths, G. Googliami, V. Googliami, Heaney, I. Henderson, J. Henderson, P. Honeywood, S. Honeywood, King, Land, McWilliams, Miles, Newton, Pemberton, Platt, Punian, Porter, Raby, Scott, M.J. Skills Jr., M.J. Steels Sr., Steady, Stevenson, Stock, Tolbert, Watson, White, Winfield, and Yellow. Abstain. Thank you.
Thank you, councillors. The outcome of the vote is that there were 16 for the motion, 28 against, and seven abstentions, and therefore the motion fell. You now return to, at the bottom of page 47, the motion goes, the council will consult with members of the public and other stakeholders as to the creation of a Clacton Town Set Council, which will be intended to serve the areas of Clacton on sea that, not, that are not currently represented by a town or parish council. This would be inclusive of the, of the following district council wards as effective from May 2019. And then the wards are listed um, on your agenda. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, so put this to the vote. Right, I don't see a call for name vote. So, we have the numbers. You need to stand, Mary. Thank you very much. Thank you. Name vote. Okay, thank you, Chairman. I won't, I've just read out the motion. I won't repeat it. Um, so I'm going to, re to read out four against, or and please say four against or abstain uh, when I read your name. Okay, are we ready? Councillor Alexander. Yes. Councillor Amos. Yes. Councillor Baker. Yes. Councillor Bray. Yes. Councillor Broderick. Yes. Councillor B. E. Brown. Yes. Councillor J. Brown. Yes. Councillor M. Brown. Yes. Councillor Buke. Yes. Councillor Bush. Yes. Councillor Callender. Yes. Councillor Calver. Yes. Councillor Cawthron. Yes. Councillor Chapman. Yes. Councillor Chittock. Yes. Councillor Coley. Councillor Cousins, yes. Councillor Davis, yes. Councillor Everett, yes. Councillor Ferguson, yes. Councillor Fowler, yes. Councillor Gray, yes. Councillor Griffiths, yes. Councillor G. Gugliami, yes. Councillor V. Gugliami, yes. Councillor Heaney, yes. Councillor I. Henderson, yes. Councillor J. Henderson, yes. Councillor P. Honeywood, yes. Councillor S. Honeywood, Councillor King, yes. Councillor Land, yes. Councillor McWilliams, yes. Councillor Miles, yes. Councillor Newton, yes. Councillor Pemberton, yes. Councillor Platt. Voting. Sorry, Jimmy. Abstain. Thank you. Councillor Poonian. Yes. Councillor Porter. Yes. Councillor Raby. Yes. Councillor Scott. Yes. Councillor M. J. Skills Jr. Councillor M. J. Skills Senior. Councillor Steady. Councillor Stevenson. Councillor Stock. Councillor Tolbert. Councillor Watson. Councillor White. Councillor Winfield. And Councillor Yellow. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. The result of the vote is that there was 15 for the motion, 29 against the motion, 7 abstentions, so the motion falls. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next motion um, to council is the utilisation of available enforcement powers to combat street drinking and antisocial behaviour in Clacton Town Centre. There's no separate report on this, so I refer you to page 44, item 44, Councillor Land. Thank you, Chairman. With an air of intrepidation and uncertainty, my ability to guide you to the correct pages this evening has been poor. I can only apologise. Um, 
I'd like to put forward the motion as laid out on a particular page in your agenda, which I'm a bit reluctant to say, uh, but I'm going to go for 44. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I have no members wishing to speak, so uh, Councillor Honeywood. So I'm, I'm happy to get the ball rolling, Chairman. I believe it's important that this new role delivers for Clacton. Time and time again, I have been contacted by residents from across Tendring, as well as visitors to our town. They raise concerns about the negative impact street drinking and antisocial behaviour is having, particularly amongst the elderly and families with young children. As a member of the Youth Strategy Group, it has been reported to me that elements of our younger generation are now freely associating with street drinkers, knowing them by name, hardly the role models that we would expect or hope for. As the summer season approaches and the temperature rises, so will the number of complaints I receive. Working with the various agencies, measures are in place to try and encourage, persuade and provide support in order to deal with the problem. Unfortunately, this alone has proven to be insufficient as the problem persists. Is this proposed approach the, the answer? I would suggest the facts speak for themselves. From July 20th to 15th of September 2018, this council part funded extra patrols on the streets of Clacton. During this period, 19 people were arrested and 26 people stopped searched. Crime figures show that compared to the same period in 2017, robbery offences were down by 40%, violence with injury crimes down 6%, shop theft fell by 20%, and the one we're thinking of, antisocial behaviour incidents reduced by 29%. In conclusion, this motion seeks to ensure that while we encourage, persuade and support continues, we have an alternative, an officer whose role it is to ensure all available enforcement powers are utilised to combat street drinking and antisocial behaviour, not only on the streets, but liaising with our own council committees. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Everett, did you wish to speak? Thank you, Chairman. I stand before you tonight a proud man. Why? Well, it's quite simple. We in the Conservative Party have asked our public, our residents, what they think about the town centre. The survey had a massive response from approximately 11,000 residents. An impressive 15% return last time I looked. So the reason I'm pleased is this. We, the local campaign teams, have bothered to ask the people what they think, something that none of the other parties have managed to do. And certainly others have not achieved the robust data set that we have now collated enabling us to know, without a shadow of a doubt, what the public's view is. So everything I say this evening on this subject needs to be considered in the context that we've asked the people what they think, and they have told us in great numbers. So to the data returns. The people of Clacton have quite clearly expressed concern at crime and antisocial behaviour in our town. They've said that they are reticent to go out after dark and they do not feel safe. Of people that said this, one of the major reasons for them not wishing to come into the town centre is the issue of street drinking. The other main thrust of the public's concern was that of antisocial behaviour in Clacton, a continuing theme throughout the survey. The people of Clacton have spoken. It is incumbent on us to listen and to act. I'm therefore proud to be seconding this motion of the Council that not only responds to the concerns of our residents, as expressed in the survey, but also supports, or more accurately complements, the actions already taken by this Conservative-led administration in appointing an anti-social patrol officer to work with police and others in combating this threat to our town. This motion seeks not only to support the anti-social patrol officer in combating street drinking and anti-social behaviour, but also to clearly underline that all available enforcement powers be utilised. These not only to be used, but to be utilised robustly and effectively, 
Gone are the times when we can just let officers have unlimited discretion in this matter because our public is telling us that this has resulted in officers just walking by and ignoring transgressors. Now is the time before it is too late to use all of our enforcement powers, not just when things get so bad that there is no choice. To coin a phrase, we need to make the town centre a no-go zone for street drinkers and antisocial activity. In short, a no-tolerance policy is well overdue, and we wish to support that in this motion. As I said earlier, I am proud to be seconding this motion because it is directly responding to the concerns raised by my public in St John's Ward and indeed across Clapton as a whole. I commend the motion to you and the philosophy of zero tolerance on antisocial activity, including street drinking, in our town. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Alexander. Councillor Alexander. Thank you, Chairman. I'm very, I'm very pleased to support this motion. Um, in the next election, the area particularly affected by this will fall into St. James Ward. And whether it be me or someone else in my stead, they will have to inherit the problems if we do not act. And we are acting as a responsible force. It's a bold move and one which I congratulate the officers and the leadership portfolio holder on taking. In my own particular committee, it was brought before us for financial reasons on overview and scrutiny. And it was agreed that this was the only way forward. We need someone with a certain power who can not only look after the well-being of the people, but also the shops themselves. As we, my partner Chris Griffiths and myself, Councillor Griffiths, this is our biggest and major problem that we will inherit and have done so far, with shops complaining constantly about abusive behaviour and total antisocial behaviour on our streets. And within the area of this ward that we're in hosts the largest amount of HMOs. But then that creates another problem because we are now seeing a rather sneaky type of um, planning application which is coming before us in the form and the guise of um, guest houses. You can't rent a room there for the night and it isn't like a normal guest house would run but there are people in there on long term visitations. Um, so all this put together, I do profoundly believe that this is the only way forward and I urge every member here to support this, to allow this officer to work very closely with our police authority because they are the main authority that can oversee the power of this. And, and the greater thing, but on a more positive note, it's all doom and gloom. For we have received um, a, a telephone call telling of antisocial behaviour and uh, people sleeping rough on the streets. We did in fact find one of those guys who was a young man who had some form of a mental issue. And I must congratulate the officers who work with the homeless team because within a space of 24 hours, they had that young man off at the streets and in a hostel. And I think we should be very proud of the way that they handled that. And I think that we should give them congratulations for doing just that. So I don't intend to continue to go on about this because it's, it's, it's pretty, in my mind, straightforward. We need to be able to administer a safe place. We're going stronger and stronger down the tourist line. We're becoming tourist organized. Our green swords are being filled with all kinds of activities and we are becoming interested to the people outside. The rallies, other organisations are looking in. County Council wish to put something on in May in order to keep it safe and to keep it positive and to keep the future of our tourist industry going, we must offer safety and security on our streets. And this is the only way in my mind that we can achieve it. And I congratulate the officers in charge. Thank you very much. Councillor Henderson. Thank you, Chairman. And yeah, that, was good. Um, that was a 
that was a real, real thoughtful um, yes. contribution from Councillor Morrison. And I know we're in the Perda time of... Um, Councillor Alexander. Alexander. Alexander, sorry. I know we're in the Perda section of the local elections, but I only hope, I only hope that the press report Councillor Everett's speech. Mm. Because they will see, they will see that this is a political, uh, political stunt. I will support it because I think it's the right thing to do. But for him to stand up, him to stand up in Tendron and tell us that the Conservatives are doing the right thing. You have cut, over the last few years, 20,000 police officers off our streets around this country. You have cut PCSOs off our streets. You have cut youth service officers off our streets. You have closed children's centres in our neighbourhoods. You have caused the problem which exists. You have created problems where people are suffering from mental health because we haven't put the resources in. We actually have now, you should be proud of it, your government, you've actually created a minister for suicide. That's how bad things are. How dare you stand up here tonight and tell us Conservatives are doing the right thing. We've put up for years and years and so are those dedicated police officers on our streets with less and less numbers. numbers. The blue line's getting thinner and thinner. They're going to actually disturbances and everything else around this con constituency in this area in ones risking their safety many a times because they haven't got enough officers to go to situations. So don't you preach to me, Councillor Everett. I don't know when you found out and when you listened to the people of Tendry. That must have been when you were a UKIP member, was it? Because you haven't been long being a Conservative member and now you're promoting the Conservative blue flag. Well, I'm telling you, you are the cause of the problem here. And absolutely, yeah. Councillor Alexander is absolutely right. We should be more caring and considerate when we're talking about people like this. You introduce the bedroom tax, force people to be homeless. You've introduced the benefit cap, forcing people to be evicted from their homes. How dare you do that to, to, and then suggest that you have got the answers to this? It's disgraceful. And absolutely right again, Councillor Alexandra, we should be treating this with a bit more compassion. Yes. yes we should be making sure these people are taken off the streets, but we should be showing them the care and decency that they deserve to get the right support and treatment that they need, not to actually just condemn them as people who are causing problems. And the antisocial behaviour issue, we all know how bad things are at the moment. There are young people entering, we know, the gang culture and the county lines issue. There are issues where young people are not getting the support they need. Those families are not getting the support they need. We've just seen at Essex County Council at the late, latest budget another £500,000 cut in families and children's services. Another £29 million cut in um, social care services. Councillor Henderson, let's bring it back to this, please. I am. Thank I'm you. talking about the cause of the problem of these people being on the streets. It's a conservative problem. You are the cause of the problem. Your government's been the cause of the problem. And now you dare to come to here and say you've got the answers. You haven't got the answers. You haven't got the answers. The only answers will be is when your government is out of office and we start investing in the proper support we need, both in health, both in police, and both in any, every other bit of care in the community that we need, because you've shown none. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Griffiths. I'll tell you more. You had to come back to the motion, did you? Mm. I didn't. It's very easy to sit there, put the party political hat on, and blame all ills on the opposition party. For me, this is my community. The reason why I'm supporting this amendment isn't because I want to wave around a, a red flag, a blue flag, or orange flag, or anything else. It's because we're members of my community from St James go into town, some of our older ones, they are abused by drunks in the streets. The reason why I'm supporting this motion 
is because when some of our younger families are going into town with children in prams, they have to watch drunks effing and blinding, using foul language and creating an atmosphere where people don't feel safe. The reason why I'm supporting this is because when some of our children go into the town centre on their own, they don't feel safe. The reason why I'm supporting this is because when, when our community go in there, they're frightened about being run over by kids cycling on the pavement. To me, it is about standing up for our community and doing what is right. And yes, we have had surveys. Yes, because we do listen to our people on this. And I have to tell you that when we get to a situation where we're more interested in the colour of our political affiliation than looking for our community, then perhaps we should look in the mirror and ask what we're actually here for. Because I'm here for the people of Tendring, I'm here for the people of Clacton, and I'm here for the people of St James. And yes, my colleague is right, we do have problems. We do have people in bed sits. We do have people that need help. And we do have people that need compassion. But I tell you... Mem members, members, okay members, and Mr Hones, you might be asked to leave. And when we get to a stage where we start looking for what's best for our community, rather than engaging in a blame culture, perhaps we'll go some way working together to try to eradicate it. And I think it's quite sad that instead of trying to support people in our community to make things better for everybody in our community, we decide to pay the party political card. I don't think that's right. I think that is a major disservice for a whole section of our people and it does nothing to help those that need it. And yes, there may have been cuts, but let's be quite honest, Tendering District Council does not control the police. It isn't controlling social services, that is another tier of local government. And we can only do what we can do for the tier of government that we control, and we can only do ultimately what is best for our community. And I'm sorry if people feel affronted, and I'm sorry if people see a blue flag rather than somebody who's just trying to stand here and help local people. Because at first and foremost, I'm here to represent the people of St James, and I'm here to do what's right for them. And if that means supporting people, if that means supporting, uh, uh, means to combat antisocial behaviour in our town centre, then I'm quite happy to second that. And I'm sorry if the left aren't. And I'm sorry if the left want to see uh, Councillor Griffiths, everything. You're sorry. going beyond the boundaries now, so oh, I either wrap up or and be I'm quiet. I'm sorry if there are some who see party political means on it. But at the end of the day, I'm there to represent the people of St James, and that's what I intend to do. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you. OK, members, I'm going to bring this to the vote now. So... There are councillors who indicated to speak, but if you can't be courteous to another across the chamber, I'm not going to allow anyone to speak. We'll just take it straight to the vote. So let's have a couple more speakers and see whether we can be courteous. I'll start with Councillor Calver. There you go. Thank you, Chair. Um, I don't really know where to go from here. Um, there's nothing wrong with passion on both sides of the chamber, and we've certainly heard that. I have to say I hope in future Councillor Everett will consider where his speech may take a debate. Yeah, yeah. Because Councillor Alexander had spoken brilliantly and had absolutely summed up the situation. There was no need for any mention of any political party. It was Councillor Everett that caused the problem and I hope he will reflect on that. I would be very disappointed if any member in this chamber does not support this motion. It is a good motion, it is the right thing to do, and I think everybody should congratulate those who have made it possible. But again, I will end by repeating, 
I hope Councillor Everett will reflect on the fact that he turned a united chamber into a very divided one with a most unfortunate speech. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Cousins. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Well, I'll go back to the original motion. I, I do look forward to the anti-social patrol officer. I've spent the last four years of, as Chairman of Licensing and especially thinking about the alcohol side of this issue. The alcohol comes from somewhere and I think we're often accused as uh, licensing committees of granting licenses too easily and I think, you know, people do realise that we have to give licenses unless there's a reason not to give them. And when we conduct a review when there is a problem, we do need the evidence to come forward to help that review. And I think this officer will be absolutely ideal for collecting evidence towards us as a council doing our licensing function of reviewing licenses where they need reviewing, because this alcohol does come from somewhere initially. So to bring this back to some of the practicalities, I, as chair, Chairman of Licensing, and I'm sure whoever takes over in the next council will appreciate that we have an officer out there collecting evidence to allow us to do our licensing job. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Winfield. Um, I support this motion, but when a lot of people vote for no lights, we've got no doctors, they can't get surgeries. We've got shops closing. It's not rocket science, but in this chamber now, people voted for no lights, no toilets. And when someone's weighing in the middle of Clacton now, Holland on Sea, it's, that's what you're going to get. There's always an answer to a question, and none of them really vote against it. Mr. Henderson, Councillor Henderson, I'm sorry, was correct. There is a reason why this is happening. We've got no police. It's, well, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Porter. There's been some very passionate um, election campaigning going on with this uh, particular motion. Um, the Labour Party should be worried because, of course, Councillor Everett has been in the Lib Dems, UKIP and Tories, and so Labour is clearly next for him. Um, <laughs> the problem with this uh, motion is that it is uh, for an anti-social behaviour officer, and we, we do actually have people that deal with this already, and they're called the police. Um, so I'm not really sure why the council is, has any need to start paying for somebody to do the job of the police. Because this person, let's be honest, is just going to get a pile of abuse. They're going to have no real powers. It's going to be a complete waste of money, is what it will be. Um, I know that other town councils, and of course we come back to the town council there, do pay for PCSOs. Now, it would actually be better if we could just pay for a police officer, to be quite honest, rather than wasting their money on this. But I certainly won't be voting for it because it is just a complete waste of money. And really, as we've seen tonight, from the things that have been said, it's all about election campaigning. There's no real point to this other than uh, to make themselves look good. So it's a total waste of money and I won't be voting for it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Newton. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I would like to 100% support Paul's motion. Basically because I actually sit on a committee where I've been looking at alcohol and the problems that it creates within this district. And I also applaud Councillor Alexandra and Griffiths for what they've said and what's gone on behind me with Councillor um, Henderson. Where I do have a slight problem is I would just like to make the issue and the point. We unfortunately particularly in the party that I'm in, do not have money to send out surveys. But as Councillor Everett will well know, we are very good at using our shoe leather, and we do knock on doors, and we do ask, as he will well attest to, because he's done it with me. And I do take exception that you actually highlight that you've made some special survey 
and we're sitting here doing absolutely nothing. I think we work hard as councillors and we try very hard to have a very fair view. And on that, I'd like to say thank you, Paul, for bringing this up as a motion. It's well needed. Thank you. Councillor Broderick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I um, absolutely agree with everything everybody has said, but I think it's a drop in the ocean, and it, but it's a shame it can't be more. I know we, we said earlier that uh, Clacton is in trouble, and we know it's not rocket science, as my colleague said, to, to work out that. And uh, obviously we'll support this motion 100%, and any more that you can do to put some presence on the streets, maybe some PCSOs extra... I don't know. I know firsthand what alcoholism does to people. Um, I'm not ashamed to say I used to sell a lot of it, but um, it's, it, when it gets hold of people, it destroys them. And we need to stop the rot at the root somehow of controlling alcohol. Uh, shops, where we can get it everywhere now. It's just a nightmare. I don't know the answer, but I'm glad that we're going to get an, uh, um, an ASB um, officer and that I hope it's going to be available 24-7. I was over the moon to hear Councillor Cousins, um, chairman of the licensing committee, say that he's, gonna, he's going to review licences. I do hope he's got some sort of hotline um, set up and not going to leave it to residents to have to record, sit in their garden and record music from outside um, functions on uh, licences that he's awarded. But that's another story. Um, happy to uh, uh, support this motion, Paul. Um, and well done for bringing it. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Bray. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I did indicate, but I think everything's been pretty well covered. Not much more to say, is there, really? Thank you very much. OK, so we're going to take this to the vote now, but I'm going to ask the Chief Executive to read out exactly what it is that you're being asked to vote on. Thank you, Chairman. It's as per the motion, which is on page 44, item 44, that this Council looks forward to the new antisocial patrol officer being appointed and asks that that person works closely with the police and the dedicated PCSO for Clacton to ensure that all available enforcement powers are utilised to combat street drinking and antisocial behaviour in Clacton Town Centre to the fullest of their ability. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. So, can I have an indication, please, all those in favour? Thank you. Any against? Any abstentions? Thank you. That's carried. Next item is recommendations from the Cabinet, the Annual Capital and Treasury Strategy 2019-20, page, starting on page 51, Councillor Gugliani. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Well, I only hope this uh, item does not attract the same amount of passion as the last one. Uh, I wish to God this um, document was about when my children were young and would have put them to sleep in no time whatsoever. And I know that Karen will uh, probably kill me for that. <laughs> She's reviewed this document many, many times uh, over and over, over the course of the years. The major change of this, of course, that we've uh, uh, combined the two, the um, uh, Treasury strategy and the, uh, financial, the Prudential strategy together, where there now will only be one document come to Council. And uh, I do commend it for uh, approval, Mr Chairman. Thank you very much. Anybody wish to speak on this? Okay, all those in favour? Thank you. Any against? Any abstentions? Carried. Thank you very much. Item number, or next item, report submitted to the Council by an overview and scrutiny committee. There are none on this occasion. Report of the Chief Executive A1, membership of committees. Chief Executive. Thank you, Chairman. A1 and A2 on your agenda are as written in your agenda and for noting. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Report to the Chief Executive A2, change in membership of political groups. Chief Executive. As per your agenda, Chairman. Thank you. 
Thank you. Report to the Deputy Chief Executive A3, Pay Policy Statement 2019-20 and Pay Assimilation. Chairman, Start. I declare an interest in leave. Thank you. Just wait for the Chief Executive to leave the building. <laughs> Councillor Callender. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, pay Policy 2019-2020. As members will be aware, the Council has a statutory ob obligation as part of, the se of Section 38 of the Lo Localism Act 2011 to publish an annual pay statement over the past few years the Council has concentrated on supporting employees on the lower pay bands, and this continues. This year, the national employers have undertaken the most radical overhaul of pay across the sector to keep peace with the national living wage. Therefore, the start of the pay scale for employees in 2019 will be £9 per hour which will be the rate of the national living wage in 2020. I am pleased to report that both the local unison and regional representatives have signed off the proposal presented to you this evening. The recommendation to full council is that one, that the pay policy statement 2019-2020 set out in Appendix A be adopted, and two, the new pay spine that will come into effect as of the 1st of April 2019, as set out in Appendix B, be noted. Thank you. Thank you very much. And a seconder, please. Chairman, I'm really very pleased to second that. Thank you. Anybody wish to speak? All those in favour? Thank you. Any against? Any abstentions? That's carried. Thank you very much. Item, um, sorry, report of the Monitoring Officer A4, review of the Council Procedure Rules, Part 4 of the Council Constitution, starting on page 111, Councillor Gugliani. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to bring to Council the uh, uh, wording of what was agreed here at the last full Council meeting, the, the one before last. Uh, the new ways that we're going to be dealing, or the new Council will deal with the uh, with motion. Um, as we're all aware, a great deal of um, uh, consultation has taken place. I like to think that was one of the most successful pieces of work cross-party being achieved in the, in the Council in uh, this, uh, this past term, and I do commend it to uh, Council for approval. Thank you. Anybody wish to speak on this? Okay. All those in favour? Thank you. Any against? Any abstentions? Thank you. That's carried. Urgent matters for debate. I have none. Date of the next scheduled meeting is Tuesday the 21st of May 2019. Thank you very much. Good evening. Please be upstanding.